Okay, Richard, tell me about what you do at CenterPoint. Uh, Tim, I'm the director of the AMI deployment at CenterPoint Energy. CenterPoint is a private investor-owned utility that serves the Houston and surrounding counties. We have approximately 2.2 million meters in our service territory and about a 5,000 square mile service area. And where are you in your project right now? Tim, we're about 95% complete on our, on our project today. Uh -huh. And uh, what are some of the key benefits that you're experiencing from the system now that you're operational? Well, that's a good question, and, and, and I'm really excited about that, is that we went into the project expecting very high rates from our re electronic read rates. We're, we're exceeding our expectations from the AMI meters that iTron's provided to us. We're in the 99.7% plus range on register reads. Our service order performance is around 98%. Uh, we have a, a lot of compliments from our customers as they use the IHD devices in their homes mm -hmm. and uh, using the interval data to help them make decisions and control their energy usage. You've had a lot of success utilizing the remote service switch. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we have. Actually, we've, uh, we've used the service switch uh, from day one. We did not actually wait. We started turning that functionality on right away. So far, uh, throughout the deployment itself, we've actually um, eliminated 2.4 million truck roads as a result of the service disconnect reconnect switch. And uh, it's been very successful. In fact, one of the high, higher success rates we've had in the county. And you recently did a big firmware download. Tell us what you were doing there and why. Yes, we did. We've been pushing firmware uh, probably for the last three or four months, but we got here recently and we pushed a upgrade to SR30 for our hand firmware to our meters. We had some experience in pushing firmware before, but uh, in this case here, we had a very good project plan in pushing it. The team that we put together in pushing that and monitoring it, we were able to accomplish that firm or download over a 21 day period and had a 99.7% success rate in pushing and activating it. And what happens to your normal meter reading operations during a firmware download? Our normal meter reading operations, so actually during the project, we've been downsizing that operation as we put meters out there and accept and approve them. We actually, within about a 60 day period, start using the billing data that we electronically receive from the meters and we push that into our billing system and we start building a customer from that. So that has been ongoing. We're actually transitioning and ramping down now because we only have about 138,000 meters left to deploy. How did the meter, the collection of data from the meters, your normal operations go during the firmware download? Oh, well, that's, that's a good question because uh, you have to push the firmware on a 24-7 basis. That's not something that you can pick eight hours here or 10 hours there or take a maintenance window for that. We actually push the firmware as we ran our normal production uh, services, whether it's meter reach, which we get three times a day during every eight hours, and our service orders that go out every day, so there was no interference working around our normal service production each day. And part of that firmware download was uh, enabling and enhancing some hand capabilities. What is CenterPoint doing to, to explore hand technologies and get those into the hands of the customers? Well, we're real involved with that, with, with the state, you know, with our commission and with our customers. We have nearly 4,000 in-home devices that we have furnished to our customers to get valuable feedback from them. And the surveys that we've taken with them, we've seen some really good results and really good comments back from our customers on how that. Uh, in-home devices uh, interfaced with our meters and the information and data that they got from our meters on this, how they was able to help them reduce and actually uh, manage their energy usage in their home. How, how successful do you feel the overall project has been this far? I think it was a great success. In fact, it was a lot more successful than I really even envisioned it to be. I mean, you always think of a lot of issues and if billing was our number one issue up front, were we, were we able to bill our customers? have good accurate bills and that was kind of resolved in the first year that we started our deployment and today uh, it's moved very well. The iTron team that we have working with us has been a great support to us along with our own employees in the company and it's been a great success. We've had a lot, actually a lot of compliments not only from our Texas Commission and our customers, they actually had, had compliments from the Department of Energy on this.
And what are the next challenges as you wrap up deployment and go fully operational? Well, it's just a first step, uh, Tim. Uh, the AMS meter that we're putting out there today, the ITRON meter is really what I call the backbone of our smart grid system. We actually are running parallel with this uh, AMI deployment. We're actually putting in automated devices that switches and an AM, uh, AMDS system for our distribution delivery system that we'll be able to integrate all that together to have really a true smart grid. And you have a pretty impressive technology and demonstration center down there. What what do you use that for and who, who do you have in to visit? We have, a, we call it our Energy Insight Center. And we basically have a, a taken a center and we show the whole concept where we can bring customers, we can bring decision makers, we can bring uh, regulators, uh, whoever might want to see how this all works together in a system. It's not just one device, it's a system that works together. How they can use this information to help them with their energy usage, how they can use this information to make the decisions that they need to make on a daily basis in their homes regarding energy. It also helps us, we can show them how it ties in to the smart grid and how these devices will help us with outages where the customer does not have to call into the company. We know about the outage, we can communicate back to them in a timely manner so the reliability will be improved tremendously through that. So we're excited about that and it really puts it into layman's terms at the Energy Insights and visually they can see how all this works. And last fall, Richard, you did a program called The Biggest Energy Saver. Can you tell us just a little bit about that and yeah. what that, how that went? That uh, went very well. That was a contest, actually, that we had never had before in the company, but we uh, actually had uh, enlisted uh, our customers into using in-home devices. We actually gave them an in-home device and try over a certain period of time. We wanted them to use this in-home device to see how much energy usage they could actually save by the data that they got from the meter on this. And we had some that were significant reductions in data. In fact, a lot of people really got engaged in this project. And uh, we gave away some pretty good prizes in it. The, the winners, uh, one of the, uh, the top winners on a Chevy, on a Chevy Volt in the process.